Welcome to Cherokee Speedway here for the fourth annual Blue Gray 100, the second day of racing. We run the heats, qualifying in the dash yesterday. 51 cars from 16 states took time trials here with David Moyer out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, setting fast time at a 19.14 seconds. Jack Pinton was second fastest. We took the top six, inverted them for the dash at put Scott Bloomquist and Mike Duval on the front row. After six laps, Scott Bloomquist took the win in the dash, so he'll start on the pole here this afternoon with Mike Duval starting in second. We've already got uh, 18 cars locked in. We'll run two consolation races, take a couple of cars from a consolation. We'll start 25 cars here in the main event, 100 laps for $12,000 here for the fourth annual Blue Gray 100 here at Cherokee Speedway. We're here with Donnie Moran uh, out of Dresden, Ohio. Donnie got his first ever win here at Cherokee last year for the uh, Blue Gray 100. Finally picked up that win after trying for a good many years here at Cherokee. Uh, before we get started here, uh, Donnie, congratulations on that win last year in the Blue Gray. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're glad to be here again this year. Well, let's talk a little bit about this weekend. You'll be starting 16th here this afternoon. Uh, of course, another daytime race. What you look for today? Well, we was here a couple weeks ago, you know, for the Ellet Memorial, and uh, the track was pretty hard on tires, so I think that's going to be a big factor in the race today. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, only two cars made the entire 100 laps that time, you and Jack Pennington. Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, ours was kind of going away there in the end. A couple guys got back by, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it goes today. And since we're starting 16th instead of towards up the front a little bit, and uh, take it as it goes a little bit with our tires and be a little bit conservative in the beginning or try to run hard and get up front a little bit, and make a pit stop. So we're just going to have to decide what strategy we want to go with. Well, that's a hard choice. Have you made your mind up? Are you just going to just wait probably right for race time to make that decision? We'll have everything ready to go either way, uh, but we'll probably wait to decide what the cars are going to do in the first, you know, 25, 30 laps in the race. Uh, if there are some competitors that falls out, look at their tires, see how much wear they're getting, then we'll decide from there. Well, Donnie, good to have you back here at Cherokee, and good luck this afternoon in the fourth annual Blue Gray 100. All righty then. Thank you very much. We're here with Jack Pennington out of Augusta, Georgia. Jack will be starting fourth here this afternoon in the Blue Gray 100. Good qualifying run, Jack. Good run in the dash. She'll start you fourth today. Yeah, we want to be second, but, you know, we qualified second and they inverted the deal, so we start fourth. 100 laps a long way, you know, we can just run fourth for a long time. We, I think we'll be out at the end. Well, Jackie's 100 lappers, especially these daytime races, seem to be, uh, be your thing here lately as a couple of weeks ago you got that big win in the 100 lap for the Stick Elliott race. Yeah, my old car runs good when it gets hard and black, so, you know, maybe we can uh, get a dial in today because we run a little different engine today than we run last time, and uh, I think we'd be all right. Well, tires is going to be the thing. We just talked to Donnie Moran down there, and you and Donnie were the only two cars a couple of weeks ago that made the entire 100 laps without a tire problem. Well, tires are going to be a big factor, you know, whether you can come in and change. Just like last time, a lot of cars fell out, and, you know, a man could come in and change and go back up. Cars got a, a lot of cars got a lap down, but I don't think that's going to be the thing today. I think a lot of these cars are going to finish, and uh, I think if you come in, you know you're going to be showing up gambling. Because if you come in late, I know you are. You know if you come in early, you might have a chance to get back up front. But uh, I think I'm going to try to stay out. And my car's handling good. I'm just going to try to stay out to the tire wear out. Well, Jack, a great field of cars here, the biggest field ever here at Cherokee this weekend. I tell you, you got some tough cars here tonight. I mean, I mean today, uh, these cars are from everywhere, you know, and got big sponsors and that's what it takes you know and this I mean there's probably uh, 30 cars out of these 50 that are capable of winning the race 
Well, Jack, congratulations on that win a couple of weeks ago, the Stick Alley. And, of course, you are the Super Carolina Thunder Series champion this year. And good luck here this afternoon in the blue-gray race. Okay, thank you. Talking to our fastest qualifier now, David Moyer out of Simpsonville, South Carolina, driver of the Enos Thomas Racing Team car. David, you'll be starting fifth here this afternoon after you was well, the fastest qualifier. A great lap at 19.14 seconds yesterday. I tell you, we were real surprised with that. We're, we're real happy also, but this is the one race of the year you don't want to start on the pole because when they avert for the dash, it kind of makes it tough with the field of cars that's here. But we're happy with where we're starting and a little bit of luck today. I think we'll come out of it all right. Well, fifth place, that's not too bad of a start in a long hundred laps here on this half mile. What you look for out here today, David? Well, I look for just everybody uh, to fall in line somewhere and just kind of see how the tire wear is going. And I, I look for a lot of cars to pit and it's just going to be a gamble. You just have to, it's hard. Everybody will have a game plan when they start off, but that kind of gets thrown out of the window most of the time. So we're just going to play it by ear and see how things go. Well, David, you had a pretty good run a couple of weeks ago for that Sticky Elliott race. That was another big 100 lapper. And you hadn't been in this car all year. You started out kind of slow, had mechanical problems. But, boy, the last few weeks you have really got this team turned around and been doing a great job. Well, I think the best thing that, that we did, we hired my brother full time to keep the car up and the maintenance part of it. And I think most of the time you'll, I feel like you get beat during the week. And I, I feel like a lot of good things are happening to the car during the week. And we're getting a car where, where every time we roll in the racetrack, we're more ready than we were before. So I, I think that's been the biggest help. Yeah, a few weeks ago, you was having mechanical problems, a lot of problems with the brakes. And you was go, going out of the speedway sometime more than you were staying in the track, wouldn't you? I tell you what, we've had some pretty good, exciting wrecks here this year, but just had to just nitpicking things. Just we had a couple of brake brackets break. We've had a little bit of motor problems, tire problems, but things seem to be coming together pretty good for us. I don't want to talk too much about it and scare it away, but I, I think things are coming together for us. Well, David Ennis Thomas has give you a great opportunity with this team, and uh, what's your plans for next year? I know you want to run some Bush sometime in the future. Well, uh, as far as I know, if, I, if I'm still working with Jason and them, I'm going to try to run five races next year in Bush. And I had planned on running Rockingham this year, but the uh, motor situation like it was, it just kind of kept us from doing anything there. But I'm going to try to run some Bush, and, and as far as I know, I'm still going to run some dirt also. So, Well, David, don't give up on the dirt because we love to see you here at Cherokee. And good luck this afternoon in the Blue Gray 100. All right, thank you very much. We're here with Mike Duvall out of Gaffney, South Carolina, before the Blue Gray 100, driver of the famous Flintstone Flyer. Mike, you qualified sixth here. That put you on the pole for the dash, and you finished second here yesterday, and that'll start you uh, second here in the main event this afternoon. Yeah, uh, the car run good last night. We run second behind Bloomquist. Uh, I got the Clements, Tony, Tony Clements motor in it, uh, Barry Wright chassis, sponsored by uh, Styers, Allen Styers Concrete Curving and uh, Turkey Landscaping. Uh, I can't say too too much about the car as far as it, it worked real good, and uh, I, I hope it's a little faster today than it was last night, but as everybody knows, Bloom is hard to catch. Yeah, he is. Well, you had a good a good run here a few weeks ago for the Stick Elliott race. That was another big 100 lapper, and uh, of course, tires and everything going to be very important again today, isn't it? I don't believe we got tires to run a whole 100 laps here. The racetrack's real hard, but the racetrack's in real good shape. It's real smooth. And uh, there'll be some good racing here today, uh, but uh, tires going to be a factor here. Uh, we we trying to get set up for, you know, like uh, maybe 60, 70 laps in pit. It's just cool what they look like. Well, Mike, you've had kind of an up and down year. You've had some good runs, but I'm sure you'd like to get this big $12,000 here today, wouldn't you? That'd make the winner look good. Well, Mike, uh, is the Duval driving still? You still, it's cool. You still got that going on? Yeah, this is the busiest time of my uh, uh, schooling. Uh, November, December, January, and February, I, I stay booked every week in the school. Uh, that's what I do during the winter. Keeps you busy doing that during the winter time. Plus, you got to kind of get this car ready for uh, the next racing season, don't you? Oh yeah, we'll have a new one. I got all my cars up for sale. I sell them every year, and then I buy new for the previous years. I usually run them one year. Well, Mike, good luck to you here for the fourth annual uh, Blue Gray 100. Have a good run here today. Appreciate it. Down the pits here talking to Ray Tucker out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Ray will be starting in the 15th position here this afternoon. Pretty good run out there in the heat race and uh, not too bad of a starting position today. No, it ain't. We uh, ended up third and just a little bit short on motor, but the old car is handling real good, so maybe we can make it up there. 
Well, Ray, you know stranger to Victory Lane here at Cherokee and East Stars Race. You got one of these big races a couple of years ago, didn't you? Yeah, we had one a few years ago. Hopefully, if we can go to Hole Hunter today, maybe we can get another. Well, Ray, uh, this team, you hadn't been with it all year, but y'all have come along and been running pretty good here towards the end of the year. Yeah, I started off here right at the end of the year with them, and uh, things is going real good, and maybe we'll have a better next year. Well, Ray, uh, good luck this afternoon, and good luck in this car number three. Thank you. We're here with Bill Fry out of Greenbrier, Arkansas, driver of the car number 66. Bill, only your second time here at Cherokee. Good to have you with us this weekend. Thank you, thank you. The weather's been beautiful. It's, it's, uh, we couldn't ask for any better. It scared me the hurricane did, but we're doing real good now. Well, Bill, uh, had a little trouble maybe in your heat race, didn't finish in the top three to put you directly into the main, so you'll start second in the Constellation. Only two cars coming out of the Constellation to the main, so you kind of got your work cut out for you. Uh, yeah, there won't be any mistakes made there. Uh, if a mistake's made there, we're, we're going to go on to the back. So we're, uh, it's going to be hard to hang on to it, I think. It's, uh, I wish I had more laps here. That's the only reason we came back today is to get in more laps on the racetrack maybe for the next races we come to. Well, Bill, I say good to have you here. What's, what's your impressions of Cherokee Speedway? Uh, the racetrack itself, uh, it's too fast. It scares me. It's, it's a fast racetrack. It's, uh, it puts on a good show for the fans, but it's, it's hard on equipment. It is very hard. Like I say, a couple of weeks ago when we had the uh, sticky out race, only two cars made the entire 100 laps without a tire change. You th you think maybe you can do it, or are you uh, setting up to make a pit stop somewhere during this 100 lapper? Uh, if we get in the feature, we're going to make the 100 laps. We've got a tire. McCrary's got a tire I think will make the feature this time, so we're going to try it. I believe that's what Jack Pinton was on was McCrary tires when he made the entire 100 laps and won a couple of weeks ago. I uh, guess it was. Well, Bill, good to have you here, and good luck this afternoon. Hopefully you have a good finish in that constellation. You get into the back of the feature, maybe a chance at that $12,000. Okay, I hope we don't make the same mistakes we made yesterday. Thank you. Bill, good to have you here to Cherokee Speedway. Here with Clint Smith out of Griffin, Georgia. Clint will be starting 11th here this afternoon in the Benson Ford. Clint, a good run yesterday during qualifying in heats. Thank you. Yeah, the car felt real good. They uh, run the program real nice. I think we got a good chance of... Uh, Coming up through the field and winning the race today. Well, Clint, uh, how'd you get hooked up with this team? Well, um, me and the guys I was with early in the year fell out over motors breaking and stuff. And uh, these guys uh, had a driver quit them. And uh, we just kind of hooked up over the last couple of weeks and decided to come run and test us out. Is this a one-shot deal or maybe something planned for 19 and 95? Uh, no, we're going to run the whole season in 95. We just decided to run this and then kind of work out some bugs before we got the season started next year. Are you going to kind of concentrate on the Have a Tampa? I know you're a past Have a Tampa champion. We're going to try to get the title back. I've won it two years, and uh, Scott beat me last year. We had a lot of motor trouble. I broke my shoulder early in the year and got us behind in points. Maybe we can just get us a uh, program started off good this year. These people got some real good motors, these Fords. They seem to be the upcoming motors in the racing, and uh, we just keep them together and see if we can do some winning. Well, Clint, a long 100 laps here on the half a mile. Uh, good luck to you this afternoon. Maybe you can take some of this money back to uh, Georgia with you. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, it's going to be endurance, I think. underneath there. for a couple of months and we're going to be back the first of March. Make your plans to be here with us. Yeah, 
Yeah, get on in here. The show is about to start. The fourth annual Blue Gray 100. Let's do it. Georgia. Gaffney, South Carolina for the fourth annual Blue Gray 100. Are you ready for some racing? I got to know. Let me hear from you right now. All right. First consolation race. Only two cars out of this one going to the main event. Only two cars will transfer into the main event. of Rodney Franklin. Outside of him, Ashland, Kentucky for Steve Francis. The 69 car out of Mitchell, Indiana is Mr. John Gill. Car number 70 out of Kings Mountain, North Carolina, Mr. Jess Smith. 42 car out of Springwood, North Carolina is Doug Sanders. G1 car out of Tupelo, Mississippi, Mr. Steve Russell. 99 car out of West Burlington, Iowa, it is Johnny Johnson. The V8 car out of Landrum, South Carolina, Rick Gosnell. 32 car, Ravenswood, West Virginia, is Scott Hartley. Hamilton, Illinois, the car number 73 of Jim Swank. S1 car, Middles, Wales, West Virginia, is Michael Smith. 21 car out of Dawson, Iowa, it is Steve Hennis. 02 car, Richmond, Virginia, Louis Lulpage. And the T20 car out of Dunville, Kentucky, is Josh Tarter. He'll make one lap, probably a couple in the V8. We got trouble already down the back straightaway. Got trouble already. Somebody clipped the back of the 24 car of Rodney Franklin. Steve Francis or somebody touched the back of the 24 car of a Rodney Franklin and turned him around. Your pole center midway down the back straightaway. Got some damage on the front end of Franklin's car. We're going to lose one. That's Josh Tarter out of Dunville, Kentucky. Joe's auto service record hooked up to the T20 car. All right, let's keep an eye on him. Only two up to the main event. Franklin on the inside. Francis on the outside. We got one working the bottom. That's John Gill. Steve Francis going to jump out front. Rodney Franklin riding second. John Gill in the 69 car. Steve Russell out of Mississippi to G1, battling with uh, Jeff Smith. They work off of turn four to complete lap number one. Steve Francis still hanging on to the lead. Rodney Franklin riding second. John Gill in third. Jeff Smith trying to move up in his brand new car, number 70. Gill up high, Smith down on the inside. John Gill up high. Let's see if the 69 car can chase down Franklin. That'll be the battle between the 24 and the 69 car. Franklin holding on. Oh, look at John Gill work the outside. That 69 car right at the top of the speedway. Steve Francis still hanging on to the lead with Franklin riding in second. Fifteen laps in this consolation race number one. Number two, gentlemen, put them in the stadium lanes. John Gill now moved it down a couple of lanes down in that first and second turn. Trying to get down the bottom of the speedway. He looks to the outside of Franklin in turns three and four. Here's the battle to make the main event off of turn four. John Gill going to make the pass in that car 69. John Gill on the move. He might take a look under your leader down the back straightaway. He looks down under Francis, backs off down into the third. He's looking back up on the top side at the halfway side. Here comes John Gill, a 69 car. We got us a brand new leader working down the back straightaway. It's John Gill in the car number 69. 
but Francis back into second, Franklin into third. Uh, now let's see if the 15 car, Francis can hold on to that second position. Rodney Franklin gonna put the pressure on him. John Gill gonna check out of him in that 69 car. to go in his 15 lapper. 10 down, 5 to go. John Gill still hanging on the lead. Francis in second. Rodney Franklin, Jeff Smith, and Steve Russell. Jeff Smith taking a look down under Franklin in that second turn. Francis can hang on to second in the 15 car. Car 69, John Gill out of Mitchell, Indiana, going to come down, take the win in Constellation race number one. Steve Francis will hold on for second, transfer to the main event. Consolation race. He put the move on Franklin and got up, blew around the 15 car of Francis and went on to take the win in the 15 lapper and transfer him into the main event. So the 69 car, John Gill out of Mitchell, Indiana, getting a win, followed by Steve Francis in the 15 car out of Ashland, Kentucky. Those are the two automobiles that will make the main event. Third point. A late mile of consolation number two. Limited Sportsman main event, put them in the staging lanes. A limited Sportsman main event, put them in the staging lanes. Outside of him, the 66 car at Greenbrier, Arkansas for Bill Fry in that car number 66. Starting third will be the zero car, Billy Scott out of Union, South Carolina. Beside him, the car number four of Ricky Weeks out of Forest City, North Carolina. Inside the 54 car out of Ellenwood, Georgia, Mr. Mike Head. Car 15, Dobson, North Carolina, it's Jimmy McCormick, the E1 car. E1 car out of Parkersburg, West Virginia, Mike Balzano. Don Clark in the car number one. E.M. Snowden Jr. in the car number 18. starting lineup here. Larry Moore scheduled to start ninth. Uh, I hate to report this, but Larry's mother passed away yesterday, so he had to go back home. All right, out of turn four, green flag flies. Got one around down the front straightaway. It's the car number one of Don Clark out of Wilson, Ohio. Scott in the zero, Ricky Weeks in his brand new race car at car number one. Mike Head in the 54 car. Let's see who's going to get the jumps and work off a of turn four. Bill Fry 
They're going to jump out front once again. E.M. Snowden out of here in turn number one. Caution flag flying once again for the car number 18 of E.M. Snowden Jr. out of Richmond, Kentucky. All right, Mason on the inside, Fry up on the outside, Scott and Weeks on row number two. Bill Fry going to grab the lead, John Mason riding second, Ricky Weeks in third. E.M. Snowden up and over, down the back straight away. E.M. Snowden Jr. taking down part of our fence, down the back straight away. Medic, medic four, back straight away, medic, back straight away, please. Is A okay? Driver A okay, down the back straight away. We're going to go a lap down. I believe his first time out in a late mile car, and there is what's left of that car number 18 as he heads down in the pier, a Swartz chassis Cornet engine, and that thing will be ready for the scrapyard. The good news is Mr. Snowden, A-OK, -okay, and he'll be able to race again. It'll take us just a few minutes to get our fence fixed on along the back straightaway down there. So Coming out, John Mason, Bell Fry still on the front row. Millersburg, Ohio, the pole man of John Mason, Greenbrier, Arkansas, for Bill Fry up on the outside. Here we go, off a of turn four. Fry going to jump out front once again. Mason riding in second, Ricky Weeks in third, Billy Scott in fourth. Oh, let's see, Ricky Weeks, your defending track champion, going to try to make the main event by getting around Mason. He's going to have to deal with Billy Scott, though, in that car number zero out of Union, South Carolina. He looks down under Weeks off a of turn two. Don't know if either Scott or Weeks will be able to catch that 72 car of Mason. Mike Head sitting back there in the fifth position. Mike Balzano trying to move around Jimmy Cormack, but that don't mean anything. You got to finish first or second. Got one out of here in turn number three. A lean car, the s, s racing car out of Mineral Wells, West Virginia. Sliding out of here in turn number three. Ricky Weeks in third, Billy Scott riding fourth, Mike Head in fifth. Ricky Weeks trying to stick the nose down under Mason, Billy Scott putting the pressure on him, Jimmy McCormick got a problem with the Dobson trucking car, he goes out of turn number one. Right now he's in a position to start in the main event, if he can hang on to the lead here in consolation race number two. Mason in second, Ricky Weeks in third. Oh, Weeks a little out of shape. Billy Scott going to get down under him as they race about 120 mile an hour down into that third turn. Weeks on the outside, Billy Scott down on the inside. Couple of Barry Wright cars, a couple of Clements Powers under the hood. Mike Balzano moving up in the fifth, getting around Mike Head.
there's the signal. Five more times around the Bell Fry in the car number 66. come out of turn four. Valzano had got down under Scott, couldn't quite make the pass. Battle off of turn two. Scott, Valzano, and Mike Head. Ricky Weeks trying his best down that back straightaway, but I don't think he's going to have enough to get up and move into that transfer spot, work his way around John Mason. White flag, fixing to come out to Bill Fry. He's got one slow car in front of him. That's the uh, Clark automobile, the car number one C. Flag out year later. Clark goes high. Fry goes down under him off a of turn two. Half a lap to go. Clear sailing for your leader out of Greenbrier, Arkansas, Mr. Bill Fry. He'll come off a of turn four to take the win in consolation race number two. John Mason gonna hang on for second. Ricky Weeks in third. Off of the blue gray 100. With a 66 car of Bill Fry getting a win and transferring to the main event, John Mason finishing in second. That'll transfer him to the main event. Tough break on Ricky Weeks, not making the big show here this weekend. Have go finishing third and had a shrine race this past year, this year here at Cherokee. First time we'd had one in a while. Wait till the 1995 shrine race, my friend. We're going to have a big one up here. Going to have a super big shrine race in 1995 here at Cherokee and raise a lot of money for those crippled children. Children. Greg Demsdale is 01, Barry Duck in the L1 car, Robert Bradley the 71, Johnny Hip the 46 car. Modified four, put them in the staging lanes. Modified, a battle for the lead. Here comes Robert Bradley, got the nose of the Monte Carlo down under the Pontiac of Demsdale. Greg Demsdale on the outside, Robert Bradley on the inside. Roger Melton back into third, Barry Duncan riding fourth. Limited sportsman cars using the top of the speedway down in turn one. Got one around down here, we'll keep it green. And get that thing out of the running groove, we'll keep the green flag out. As the car number three spinning down here in the turn. Dimsdale still your leader with Bradley riding in second. Modified four, put them in the staging lanes. Modifies, let's go, gentlemen. Modified four cylinder main event time. Modified, let's go, gentlemen. Modified four cylinder main event time. Robert Bradley still putting the pressure on you later. He's got the nose of the Monte Carlo under Dimsdale, but a little more horsepower in that 0-1 car. As he pulls out about a car length lead, down into that third turn. Dimsdale a little out of shape, had to back in, cocked around a little bit on that 0-1 car. But he'll hang on, got one around off of turn two. Your leaders will go to the high side and dodge him. Roger Melton still holding on third. Barry Duncan in fourth. Johnny Hip in fifth. Caution flag going to fly. Johnny Hip and Tess Deer around down here in turn four. Got some late mile drivers passing through the grandstand, if you would. Contribute a little bit. We're taking up a little money for Randall Fowler here this weekend. Barry 
They're ducking in trouble. He's out of here. Johnny Hip also spinning down in turns one and two. As many of you might know, Randall's been battling cancer the last few months, and we wish him well and been unable to work. So late model drivers passing through the grandstand, taking up a little money for Randall Fowler. Caution flag on a fly. Hello, oh, bumper tag. Demsdale goes up a little high. Bradley shoots down under him. We got us a new leader down the back straightaway. Got one around to the inside of turn two. We'll try to keep it green as your leaders work off of turn four. Robert Bradley up front, Demsdale in second. Roger Melton still riding in third. Big cloud of dust in turn number two. Caution flag going to be flying. Event with Robert Bradley out front. Demsdale riding in second. Demsdale now a little bumper tag on Bradley as they work off a of turn number four. Roger Melton riding in third, and it's Tesnier in the 45, and Charles Dillard in the double O car. Two laps to go to signal, gentlemen, two more times around. lap to go for the white flag as Robert Bradley works down into turn three. Demsdale up high trying to catch back up. He's about two car lengths behind. White flag coming out to McCarter Farms, the pack shoes cars automobile of Robert Bradley. Down the back straight, a half a lap to go here for the main event win. Limited sportsman portion of the Blue Gray 100. Robert Bradley looking good as he works out of turn four. He'll take the win, a 71 car. Demsdale riding in second, Melton in third. Side of him in two. Oh. The XP car, Mike Holcomb in a 97. Randy Evans in the 01. Ronnie Goforth in the car number double zero. Kyle Davis in the 78 car. Ron Parker in the 57. Doug Davis a D1 car. Tim Howard to be 52. Oh, let's take a look at him. Three wide as Cogdell to the inside. Brandon Davis in the middle. Jeff Gibson. Davis going to back off of as they go down into that third turn. Couple of Plymouths up front. Uh, Pinto riding in second. Got one around. It's the double O car of Ronnie Goforth. Well, Davis a little early on the start in the 78 car. All right, 
flag, green flag flying now. Michael Cockdoll working the XP car down under Jeff Gibson. As they come off of turn four, Apshear leader Ryan Owens riding in second. Here comes Ryan Owens, a couple of Plymouth Irons battling off a of turn two. Ryan Owens going to be a new leader in that car number six. Apshear back to second, then it's Cogdell in the Pinto. Brandon Davis, a four car, and Jeff Gibson in the 19 automobile. Mike Holcomb trying to move up in that red and white 97 car. Still your leader down the back straightaway with Apshire riding in second. Thunder and Lightning put them in the stadium lanes. TNL, let's go, gentlemen. Thunder and Lightning, we are looking for you. Main event time. turn two, Kyle Davis to the inside. They made a sandwich out of that 19 car of Gibson. Randy Evans got trouble in his 01 car. Pink Pinto slowing. Heads up, first turn, pit area. Oh, well, looks like Randy Evans, the 01 car, going to be trying to get down into the pit area. <laughs> Mike Holcomb with a problem on the 97 cars. They put a lap on him. flag on a fly for the car stopped under the habitat side off a turn. Charles Cerny up a little high. Kyle Davis moving back around him. Getting back up into the fifth position. A battle down into the third turn. Kyle Davis in the 78 car. Charles Cerny in the car number seven. The Bishop Auto Parts automobile. Thunder and lightning. Last call. Put them in the staging lanes. TNL. Let's go. Owens now stretching out the lead just a little bit in that car number six. Bruce Apsher hanging on to second, the M1. Cogdell riding third in the XP car. Four Plymouths and one Pinto up there in the top five. Michael Cogdell, the XP car, the winner here a couple of weeks ago for a Stick Elliott race. flag out. We got some debris here on the front straightaway just past the flag stand. Got some off of a car laying right down here. To the right of the flat model. You want to check that weight. Scales are open, gentlemen. Caution flag a break for Apshers. He got to close back up on Ryan Owens. Looks like that six car just a little bit too strong. He got about a three car length lead. Working in the third turn. Apshur closes it down to about a car length. They come back to the white flag one more time around. <laughs> My 
Michael Cogdell now closing up on the back bumper of Apshire. Leaders work down into the third turn. Checkered flag in Wayne Allen's hand. Here for the modified four-cylinder main events. They come off a of turn four. Let's see Ryan Owens going to hang on. of this tree and stopped it that he's won three years in a row but there's still plenty of time left yeah of course Spartanburg, you, South Carolina Cotton Owens his grandson give yeah, Ryan Owens a nice hand down there for Bobby Gill Bill, there is a brand new race car up on the outside front row a new Walter Newman car for Mr. Petey Ivey out of Union South Carolina the head knocker car second row on the inside the Flounder Restaurant car Mr. Wally Fowler out of Chicago in the car number four Beside you gonna pull for the old line stalker in the car number zero huh it is Thunder and Lightning main event. Here we go, off of turn four. Ivy going to grab the lead. Bishop riding in second. Here comes Earl Davis trying to work down under Jamie Madison. Front six cars tied right together as they work turns three and four. Ivy up a little high. Bishop a little out of shape. He'll hang on to it. Bishop now goes high. Wally Fowler going to slide under him. Here comes Jamie Madison in that car number one. Young man in nice stalker, car number one. Got the win here a couple of weeks ago in the Stick Elliott race. He's riding third. Let's see if Wally Fowler can chase down Petey Ivey. Flag flying, Wally Fowler gonna take a look down under you later. Let's see if he can do anything with him. He falls back in line. Here comes Bishop back down to the inside of Madison. The two Bobby Johnson paint contractors cars battling side by side. Those two put on quite a race here a couple of weeks ago. Fowler up high, they'll both slide around the far corner. Wally Fowler. Wally Fowler with a handful of steering wheel down there in the turn. He dives in high, gets on the brake. Here comes Earl Davis trying to move up in the five car. Caution flag gonna fly. Caution flag coming out. In second, and it's Madison, Bishop, and Earl Davis. Petey Ivey on the top side, Fowler trying to get out of here. Now here comes Jamie Madison, the young man in that car number one. Earl Davis trying to move around. Bishop, look at this battle. We got five of them. They'll stack them three wide off a of turn four. Bishop working down under Madison. Jamie Madison got caught on the outside. Bishop and now Earl Davis gets around him as they hung bumpers and out went Madison. Madison and Davis around in turn three and four. Fowler riding in second, Bishop in third. Putting the pressure on Petey Ivey. Here he comes, here comes Bishop to the inside. They go down the back straight away. Ivey able to hold him off. A brand new Walter Newman car. He slides high. Fowler going to get up to the wheel, up to the door, off a of turn four. Fowler slid a little high. Bishop going to work down under him. Here comes the nice stalker, Billy Bishop. Bishop slides around Fowler up to second, but they having a hard time getting around that car number one. Let's see if Bishop can do anything with him. High flag. Got one around down here in turn four. To our next gentleman, Wally Fowler trying to get down under Bishop here on the restart. He goes 
goes a little high. Bishop got the nose down up in the door of the car number one of Petey Ivey. Let's see the drag race down into the third turn about 100 miles an hour. Oh, look at that good, clean, hard racing up front. Ivey on the outside, Bishop down on the inside. Petey Ivey led that lap by about a nose. I don't know where you hang on to him or not. The nice stalker, Billy Bishop, going to be a new leader. Fowler going to move up in the second. Now, how many Night nice Stalker fans we got out there? Wally Fowler sliding out of here, turn four. Earl Davis coming from the rear. He's up in the fourth. Down the back straight away. Battle back there for fourth. Your leader coming up on some slow traffic down here in turn one. Bishop trying to make his way around that slow car. He'll clear him down the back straight away. Laps are winding down in this thunder and lightning main event. Coming down for Billy Bishop in the car number zero. Petey Ivey going to try to hold off Bobby Howard. Bobby Howard in a red eight car taking a look down under Ivey. Got the nose under him. He's up to the wheel, up to the door, down the back straightaway. Ivey shuts the door on him down in turn four. That'll be the race back there for second. As Billy Bishop going to take the win. Ivey will get second. We got one hard in the outside wall down here off of turn four. Heads up on the front straightaway, heads up. Medic four, you might want to climb aboard and head down this way. You took a pretty good lick into that wall down here off of turn four. He's out of it, he's all right. Hold the, hold the rescue, he's all right. Hold your rescue squad, he is out and A-OK. -okay. Cars to the front straightaway, assemble at the uh, cross some of the scale area at the wall for driver's introduction. It's made up right now. The car number 92 of David Moyer turned in a time of 19.148 seconds. Of all the 51 cars from 16 states, that car right there was your fastest qualifier. If you've seen him, you wouldn't have believed it. He was dressed up in uh, white tights, garter belt. Garter belt. Cowboy boots and a mini skirt. You should have seen him out here. Keys found in the parking lot. If you can identify him, come to the tower. Got some keys found. Once again. There comes your pole center bringing up the car number 18 of Scott Bloomquist. Starting 10th, he won heat race number four here yesterday afternoon. The Master Belt race car Cornet engine. The Arizona Sports Shirts Lanigan auto sales car out of Union, Kentucky. The car number 29 of Darrell Lanigan. 
Starting ninth, the 1993 Super Carolina Thunder Series champion, the Mid-Eastern Truck Wash, Clarendon Auto Parts car. He won heat race number three yesterday. Manning, South Carolina, the car number 07 of Ed Gibbons. Starting eighth, winner of heat race number two yesterday, the Bullet Chassis, the Lockridge Development, the Compton Inn car, Beckley, West Virginia, the car number 33 of Joe Meadows. Starting seventh, one, heat race number one here yesterday, the Hawkeye Truck in Miller Brothers Construction, Master Belt Drain car, the 1994 World Dirt Track Champion out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, the car number five of Ronnie Johnson. Starting sixth, the Parkway Food Service A&H Motorsports Rocket Dream Car winner of the World 100 this year out of Batesville, Arkansas, the car number 75 of Billy Moyer. Starting fifth, our fastest qualifier here yesterday, the Enos Thomas Racing Team Warrior Car, Clements Engine, the Dixie 2 Auto Parts Car, Simpsonville, South Carolina, the car number 92 of David Moyer. Starting fourth, a Barry Wright race car, Clements Engine, the winner of the Stick Elliott race a couple of weeks ago. The Wards One Stop, Starrett Trucking, the McCrary Racing Tires car, former Western Cup Grand National driver, out of Augusta, Georgia, the car number zero one of Jack Pennington. Before we continue with driver's introduction, look at the beautiful trophy down there. Jack is going to get for being the 1994 Super Carolina Thunder Series champion. Give him a nice hand down there. David Taylor from Lakeview Speedway down next to the coast of South Carolina. Going to present Jack with that beautiful trophy. And $8,000 for being a 94 Super Carolina Thunder Series champion. Congratulations, Jack. Big, beautiful trophy. All the photos going to be took down there. David Taylor representing Lakeview Speedway. Big smile down there, Jack. Congratulations, my friend. Starting third here this afternoon, the GRT race car, Dramey Racing Engine, Bazooka Base Tube, the Gulf Valve Service, the Centers Uniform Car, a four-time dirt track world champion, formerly from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, now living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, driving the double-O car, Mr. Freddie Smith. Yeah. Starting front row outside in the car number F1, the Barry Wright race car, Clements Engine, the Styres, Concrete Curbin, Cherokee Landscaping, Hames Body and Frame Shop car. You know he is, Gaffney, South Carolina, the Flintstone Flyer, Mike Duvall. And starting on the pole, the winner of our dash here yesterday afternoon, the 1994 have a Tampa champion, the Barry Wright race car, Cornet, Ford Power, the J&J &J Steel, Magnum, high pressure wash automobile, Morrisburg, Tennessee, the car number 18 of Scott Bloomquist. <laughs> Nineteen and 94 stars, blue, gray, 100. long laps to go with $12,000 waiting for somebody at the end of it. Session here, everybody take your seat in the grandstand. Heads up down in the pit area. Greg Moon, hang on on the back straight away. They coming to you, my friend.
is the Ford powered car for Scott Bloomquist, Mike Duvall in the F1, Freddie Smith the double O car, Jack Panton in the zero one, Billy Moyer in the 75, David Moyer the 92, Ronnie Johnson in the five, Joe Meadows the 33, Darrell Lanning in the 29, Billy Bishop the 10, Ed Gibbons the 07, Steve Shaver in the 30, Clint Smith in the car number one. the green. Is it going to be Bloomquist, Duval, Freddie or Pennington? Okay, sign coming out. Let's hope everybody has a good clean start here on this first lap. The most dangerous, worst part of any race right here on this first lap. Let's hope everybody behaves. Is Mike Duvall going to get the jump on Scott Bloomquist, huh? He's on the outside. Let's see that guy. Good start off at turn four. Bloomquist going to jump out in front of him. Scott Bloomquist going to be your leader. Duvall riding in second. Freddie will slide up into third. They look good. They string out down the back straightaway. Jack Panton riding fourth. Billy Mortar in fifth. Scott Bloomquist will lead lap number one. Second, Freddie Smith hanging on into third. Look at the 69 car, John Gill. He's passed about four or five of them. John Gill made his way around Hot Rod and around Swartz. Got one slow down here in turn one. Looks like the Billy Hicks. No, oh, excuse me, that's another one. It's the 15 car of Steve Francis. Fine. Looks like a battle going to be back there for second and third between Duval and Freddie Smith. Freddie working right down the bottom of the speedway in that double O car. Got one stopping in turn three. It's the V8 car of Rick Gosnell. The V8 car of Gosnell stopping between turns three and four. Everybody ease them down. We got Gosnell stopped on the top of turns three and four. Steve Francis back into the first turn pit area. And the all tires with plenty of air in them as he rolls the stock wheel right here in the Jimmy Ross garage car. Up. Oh, let's see. Trying to get back out. A turn two, back in the pack, several of them getting side by side. Everybody pretty well staying in line. Blue for see you later. David Moyer trying to look down under Billy Moyer. Had the nose under him off a of turn two as they race down into the third turn. Billy Moyer in a 75, David Moyer in the car number 92. 92 car of Moyer, a fastest qualifier here yesterday. That is the battle off of turn two. David Moyer up to the wheel, up to the door, down into the third turn. The last say David Moyer going to pull off the pace. Move up into fifth in that car number 92. Oh, 
Let's see if Moyer can chase down your fourth place car. That'll be Jack Panton in the zero one. Looks like Moyer making up a low ground on that fourth place car. Bloomquist out front, he's trying to check out. Meanwhile, Duval riding in second, Freddie Smith in third. Donnie Moran got a battle with a 30 car, Steve Shaver. Side by side for the moment, down the front straightaway. Shaver on the outside in the 30 car, Moran down on the inside in the car number 99. Moran will move around him, take over the position. Donnie Moran, the defending champion of this race in that car number 99. continuing to lead this thing. He's stretching out a good lead over Duval. Mike Duval hanging on in the second. Freddie Smith in third. Pennington riding fourth. David Moyer in fifth. And it's Billy Moyer. back down into the pit area. Donnie Moran now trying to move up on the 10 car of Billy Bishop. You battle off a of turn four. Moran on the inside, Bishop on the outside. Your leader, Scott Bloomquist, going to be coming up on some heavy lap traffic. First car in front of Bloomquist will be the V8 car of Rick Gosnell. He passes him down to the inside. Directly ahead, Billy Hicks, Ricky Weeks, and John Mason for your lead car of Bloomquist. Caution flag. coming out. A couple of Barry Wright cars up front. Then we got a, a GRT car for Freddie. Green flag flying. Trying to get around Billy Bishop, side by side battle down the back straightaway. That has been the race the last few weeks. Moran and Bishop. Moran working to the inside. Bishop up on the outside to go down into turn number one. Bishop slides high. Moran will take the spot, move up another position. second. Freddie Smith riding in third. Followed by Pennington and Moyer. Lance Smith got a battle out of turn four. The car number one and the 07 car were side by side down into turn number one. Ed Gibbons in the 07 car but Clint Smith putting the pressure on him in that car number one. Freddie Smith 
Smith and Mark Duval. They got a bad line of turn four. Freddie Smith right on the back bumper of Mark Duval. Down to the first turn. Out of turn two and down the back straightaway. Freddie Smith going to move up into second. The golf foul service car now up into second. Here comes Jack Pennington working down under Mike Duval. In a 92 car, trying to move up also. The battle for fourth position. David Moyer on the inside. Mark Duvall's got a problem. The Flintstone Flyer's got a problem. Oh, looks like left side tires A-OK. Second look at the right side. Now Scott Bloomquist, he can go at the cone and he's on it. Green flag flying. Oh, let's see if Freddie Smith's got anything for that 18 car of Bloomquist. Mike Duvall making his way back out. Mike Duvall back out of the pit area. Steve Shaver also coming out in the 30 car. Pressure on Rick Eckert. Now John Gill taking a look down under Billy Bishop down the back straightaway. John Gill and Billy Bishop side by side down the front straightaway. Bishop going to hold him off, but Gill trying to work to the inside. That car number 69, he'll make the pass down the back straightaway. Now Charlie Swartz will nose down under Bishop. Got a battle down the back straightaway. Clint Smith in that car number one trying to work around Ed Gibbons. Ronnie Johnson just in front of them in the car number five. Coming to a stop. Up in the pit area, Steve Shaver coming in. Mike Duval going to follow him in in the F1 car. Pizza in the concession stand. So you're waiting on a good cold Pepsi and some hot little Caesars pizza. They got it in the concession stand. Just got a fresh load of hot little Caesars pizza. We're coming back out in the 30 car. Charlie 
Billy Swartz trying to get around Billy Bishop. They battle down the back straight away. Mike Duvall back out in the Flintstone Flyer. Got the hood off. Evidently some uh, mechanical problems on that F1 car. Clint Smith working around Ed Gibbons down the back straight away. The Benson Ford car looking strong in that car number one. As he moves up into, I believe, seventh position. Charlie Swartz, the car number one, moving up around Billy Bishop, another position. Got problems down at turn. David Johnson, Bill Fry getting together. Heads up down the pit area, Mike Duval coming back in. Got the hood off the Duval car that leads you to believe they got some kind of problem under the hood of that automobile. Steve Sh A wrecker hooking up to the Davy Johnson car. Well, for them here this afternoon. As they're all still down in the pit area. Duval there pushing the F1 car. Pit crew frantically trying to get Mike Duval back out here. Back on to the speedway in the F1 car. Still out front, Freddie Smith holding down second, Jack Panton in third, David Moyer riding in fourth. It's Billy Moyer in the 75 car, Ronnie Johnson in the five. Clint Smith putting some pressure on Ronnie Johnson down the back straightaway. Clint Smith had a notion to go to the inside down in that third turn. Ronnie Johnson in the five car, Clint Smith in the car number one, the Benson Ford powered car. A problem on Billy Bishop, the 10 car slowing down into the first turn. chassis automobile. Clements power under the hood, but some kind of problem with that 10 car. And on it. Smith riding in second. Pennington, then it's Moyer, and then Billy Moyer. Trying to close up on the back bumper of Jack Pennington. The battle back there for third.
keeping the pressure on Ronnie Johnson. Lance Smith having a great run in that car number one, the Benson Ford car. and shut the door on him. Halfway sign gonna be coming out a year later, Scott Blomquist. 50 down, 50 to go, halfway. Best battle on the speedway between Ronnie Johnson and the five car and Clint Smith in that car number one. Hey, battling back there for the sixth and seventh position. Your leader of Blumquist is going to be coming up on the slow cars of Duval, Shaver, and Francis. Cars in front of you later, Scott Bloomquist. Oh, let's see how he works them down that back straightaway. Shaver and Francis side by side. Now Duval tries to work his way around Francis. Your leader Bloomquist right in behind him. Bloomquist will split the cars off on turn two. Scott Bloomquist to the outside of Duval to the inside of Francis. Puts a lap on both of them. So your outside front row starter, Mike Duval, just going to lap down to your leader, Scott Bloomquist. Pack of cars right in front of you later, Bloomquist. As Bill Fry, Joe Meadows, and Billy Hicks battle down the back straightaway. Bloomquist coming up to lap the 30 car of Shaver. About seven lap slow cars right in front of you later, Bloomquist now. Oh, let's see how he works them. Right in behind the 30 car of Shaver, Ricky Wicks way up high in the car number one. The balloon Quest will go to the inside, put a lap on Ricky Wicks. Wicks gonna pull the top of the speedway. One over Ricky Wicks. He's back out. Charlie Swartz still down into the pit area. Let's see if he can get back out before he gets a lap down.
Ellis continuing to lead the fourth annual Blue Gray 100. And the Cornette powered Barry Wright race car number 18. Freddie Smith riding in second. Jack Panton in third. in a pack. Looks well, like Clint Smith has worked his way around Ronnie Johnson. So Clint Smith moving up another position. Up into sixth place in that car number one. I'm coming up on some slow cars. Go down the back straightaway. Ricky Weeks, Shaver, and Mason. Three cars will be in front of you later here in about a lap and a half. Bloomquist has some good luck as most times when he gets in this heavy traffic, a caution flag will come out. right in front of you later as they work off a of turn two. Keep an eye on it. Ricky Weeks right in front of you later. Blue with Hot Rod LeMans in trouble. Hot Rod slides to the top and turns three and four. He'll stop the runway racing car. It down in the pit area. Heads up down pit road. He waits to the cone. He's on it. between David Moyer and Billy Moyer. Billy Moyer had the nose down under him. Clint Smith now up to the back bumper of Billy Moyer as David Moyer puts the pressure on Jack Pennington. the nose under. He's side by side with Billy Moyer in the first turn. Well, Moyer going to hold him off for the moment. Now Smith dies to the inside in a Benson Ford car. He'll slide up into fifth in that car number one. Grant Smith started in 11th. He's currently running. In that fifth position. Hot Rod LeMass going to be headed to the pit area. That'll be all for Hot Rods. The car number six goes into the pit area. I believe something let go in the motor for Hot Rod.
Moran. Donnie Moran with a battle. Bloomquist still out front, and your leader is a lap to wind it down. Freddie Smith riding in second. Pinkton in third, followed by David Moyer, Clint Smith, and Billy Moyer. riding there, holding his position, hoping maybe something will happen to Scott Bloomquist. He knows he can't outrun him. Maybe a little bad luck for Bloomquist will be good luck for Freddie here in the late stages of this Blue-Gray 100. Donnie Moran putting the pressure on Merrill Lanigan. Oh, Lanigan out of Union, Kentucky in the car number 29. Ronnie Johnson in the five and Donnie Moran in the 99. back into some lap traffic. He puts a lap on John Mason, trying to put a lap on Ricky Weeks. Meanwhile, David Moyer is putting the pressure on Jack Pennington. for third position, heating up as Clint Smith has caught Moyer and Pennington. Your leader, Bloomquist, trying to work his way around the 30 car of Steve Shaver. He's got Shaver, Gosnell, and Steve Francis in front of him as they go down the back straightaway into the third turn. Lap car side by side in front of him. Bloomquist to go to the inside. Put a lap on Francis, put a lap on the 30 car of Shaver. Freddie Smith, your second place car. Now he's going to have to work out lap traffic. now nose to tail back off that third position. Jack Pinton in the 01 car, David Moore in the 92, and Clint Smith in the car number one. That's the best battle on the speedway. Pennington, Moyer, and Clint Smith. David Moyer with a nose down under Pennington off of turn two. making a last ditch effort to get down under Pennington. It cost him as Smith moved around him.
first year Australia leader. 94 laps complete, I believe. 94 complete. Going to be five laps to go for Scott Bloomquist. Five to go. Five laps to go for Scott Bloomquist. Caution flag on a fly. We got one stopped in turn two. Car of Billy Moyer. Good to have him here. Hope he'll be back to Cherokee real soon. Here we go. We got five laps to go for all the money. Oh, let's see if any of these positions is going to change here in these last five laps. The battle's going to be back here for third between Jack Panton and Clint Smith. Don't look like anybody's going to catch the flying forward of Scott Bloomquist here today. Pennington trying to hold on in the third. With Smith riding in fourth and Moyer back to fifth. Scott Bloomquist absolutely dominating them here this afternoon. He looks at two more times around. As Freddie Smith rides second in the battle back here for third. Jack Panton in the 01, Smith in the car number one, and David Moyer, your fastest qualifier in that car number 92. White flag out on the money run for Scott Bloomquist and the $12,000 off of turn two and down the back straightaway. He's got a half a lap to go to lead all 100 laps and claim his second blue-gray 100. He's off a of turn four for the $12,000 Scott Bloomquist. Freddie Smith will get second, Pennington in third. Scott. He's won over three hundred thousand dollars on the Hammer Tampa circuit this year. I believe this is probably I believe his second win for stars this year. But Scott Blumquist over three hundred thousand dollars. He won the Hammer Tampa shootout. He's had a great year and kept it off here, uh, winning uh, five, probably the final race they'll run in nineteen and ninety four. Bullsburg, Tennessee. Give Scott Blumquist a big hand. Congratulations, Scott. Good job, my friend. Steve, I'm on the way. Steve, I'm on the way. Scott Bloomquist out of Mooresburg, Tennessee, the winner of the 1994 Blue Gray 100, a dominating fashion, led all 100 laps. Congratulations, Scott. Thank you. You know, we, we really feel good to come back and win this event. We had a little bad luck last year running it and dropped out, but, you know, this is a real good race to win here. Uh, it's one of the most important ones of the season, we think. It gives everyone something to think about all winter, you know. You got two of the last three years you've got this race. You got your first ever win here at Cherokee a couple of years ago in this Blue Gray race. Yeah, you know, we've run real strong here and uh, took us a little time to figure out what it took to finish this race on tires. And, you know, you got to really pace yourself. Today we thought we had enough tire and I pushed it pretty hard all day. And uh, it looks like we're in the cords right now. But, you know, it worked for us and uh, we won the race. That's all that matters. Well, a couple of weeks ago, only two cars finished on the same tires. But today, looks like probably five or six of the front cars all made all 100 laps on tires. Yeah, it looked like he put a little soap on the racetrack early. And I think that took a lot of temperature out of the racetrack, which gave us a little more tire wear. Uh, it really helped us out a lot, but we were still borderline today, and uh, you know we just well, we made it. 
Well, Scott, your second big win here at Cherokee. You fell out a couple of weeks ago for the Stick Elliott race, had problems with that. But back in August, you dominated and got that 15,000 for the Habitat and come here today and got the 12,000 for the Big Stars race. Yeah, we really enjoy coming here. This is a good racetrack. We've got a good setup. You know, Barry Wright's got a good car. Uh, we've really got it working good here, and our, our Ford Cornet built engine is uh, really running strong. You know, I think the guys are really going to have to look at those hard over the winter. Yeah, since you put that Ford engine in kind of midway through the season, it's really put you in victory lane a good bit, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, we've won a lot of races, set a lot of track records. Uh, you know, engine's been running real strong, and, uh, you know, we really we really got to thank people at Ford and uh, Jack Cornette for building them for us, and everyone's doing a real good job. It's a real good team effort. Well, Scott, you won just about everything on dirt this year. A few of them got away from you, but you was usually in the pits. You either won or broke at most of the big races, so congratulations to you. Can you tell us a little bit about, bit about your plans for 1995? Uh, we've got a uh, all-pro car that we're going to run some races with next year, and um, hopefully we're going to run a little bit bush. You know, or, uh, we're just we got some plans that are open right now, but I've got a lot of new engines getting built for my dirt car, and we're going to run strong. And uh, if I have to, I try to run the dirt and the asphalt shows in the same weekend. You know, we just might have to fly between them. But I'm still planning on running a lot of dirt next year, and uh, maybe we'll get into some asphalt racing next year too. With the money they paying on the stars, have a tap on all these dirt circuits, can't give up the dirt because there's really a lot of money on the dirt, isn't there? Yeah, you know, we've seen where uh, there's already over half a million up for grabs in dirt next year. And, uh, you know, if a guy has a real good year, we've, we come close to 400,000 this year and dropped out of a few major events that we, we could have went way over the half million mark. And, you know, the dirt racing's really getting good, and uh, there's a lot of good competition and, uh, and a lot of people back the sport. So, you know, dirt racing's really picked up a lot. How about this Barry Wright chassis built just down the road here in Cowpen, South Carolina? Can't say enough for him. You know, Barry, uh, he builds a first-class car and does excellent maintenance for me. Uh, you know, we haven't had any problems dropping out of races because of him, that's for sure. Well, Scott, once again, congratulations on the second Blue Gray 100. About four or five big races here at Cherokee next year. We'll look for you back, my friend. Thank you. Don't forget the Sports Plus video. Place your order for the video. Roger Hamrick, I believe, in the car number one. Herbie James in the car number one. Roger Hamrick in the line car, they tell me. He didn't make the fail. Roger Hammock did not make it in his nine car. That's the other nine automobile on the speedway. Lynn Holloway in the white nine car. Herbie James, your leader in the car number one. Johnny Bridges in the X car. Got one in the wall. Kenny Compton, I believe, in the K2 car. Kenny Compton getting the wall down here at the flag stand in the K2 car. James, your leader, the Fastway Oil Company car number one. Stock four, put him in the stadium line. slowing down the back straightaway the nine car of Lynn Holloway about to come to a stop just past the staging lane. All right, Herbie James out front and the car number one, the Fastway Oil Chains car. Stock four, put him in the staging lane. Stock four, let's go. Eric 
Good, go the breeze way. Eric Good, go the breeze way, please. Eric Good, go the breeze way. Eric Good, go the breeze way, please. Coming down for you later. Sugar flag out for Herbie James in a fast way oil change car number one. Steve Melton in the car number 11, Gordon Irvin in the 12 car. Ken Sides in an all-colored car number 5, Phil McFalls in the 01 car. Talmadge King to P1, they starting a little early. Leader didn't start, but the rest of them did, I don't think so. No go, gentlemen, let's try it one more time. McIntyre to the inside. Steve Mountain in the Plymouth up on the outside. Here comes the Pinto of Gordon Irvin. The five car riding in third. That's Mr. Ken Size. Sandy Garland back there in a black 28 car. Steve Mountain going to lead lap number one. Got a couple of them together up against the wall here off of turn four. Caution flag gonna be flying. Planes, Pierstock, let's go. Jam session down here in turn four. Everybody's still going. Keep them rolling. We'll keep it green. Couple of them slow. Heads up. First turn pit area. Couple of them are going to be trying to get in down here. Heads up. First turn pit area. Yeah, like the 68 car, Ricky Fox, and the 01 car of McFalls. Caution flag on a fly. Put them in the staging lane, gentlemen. Steve Mel, stay later in the car number 11. McIntyre riding second, Ken Sides in third. That's all the autographs. Jack said he's going to have to head out of here, so that'll be all the autographs. Halfway sign about to come out. Hey, 
halfway down, halfway to go here in the stock four solar main event. car putting a little pressure on your third place car of Ken Size. They work off a of turn two. Irvin with a nose of the Pinto down under him. Down into the third turn. Ken Size in the Toyota gonna hold him off. That third position laps a winding down here. Two to go for the leader in the Plymouth Hour, the Barney's Collectibles car of Steve Melton. Steve McIntyre still holding on in the second. Ken Sides riding third. Got the motor for sale in that five car. I believe the 17 car is for sale. And your lead car, it is also for sale. So a lot of four-cylinder cars for sale here. Your winning car got a for sale sign on the side of it. A Plymouth Iowa for Steve Melton. Your second place car getting into a lap car. Around goes the lap car in turns one and two. Going to have a battle for second now as Ken Sides closes up, takes a look down to the inside of Steve McIntyre. McIntyre is going to hold him off, I believe, as they come out of turn four. Steve Melton going to get the win. McIntyre will finish in second. Souvenir stand still open. You hadn't got that uh, Christmas present for somebody or maybe for yourself. You're up. Dennis Sanders in the car number 28. Chad Tesnier in the 45 car. Gary Brewington in the 6 automobile. Ricky Hines back there in the car number 11. Final green flag waved by Wayne Allen for the 1994 racing season. Pure stock main event time. Quick in the 22 car. Look out, they're going to swap some sheet mail in a turn. Got one around. It's the L1 car. Your front row starter, Jimmy Odom. He's around. It looks like Eddie Quick going to be your leader in the 22 car. That's Scott Tesnier in the double O car. The black car on the outside. Gary Brunton in the six car. Scott Tesnier going to put the big black board up into the lead. Gary Brunton in the Buick. That's that car number six trying to move around the 22 car of Eddie Quick. Quick going to hold him off. Riding second in the white 22. Gary Brunton on the outside. Ford up front, a Buick in second, a Monte Carlo, I believe, for that 22 car. Got a lot of smoke out of the three car down here into turn number one. Dennis Sanders up on the top side, riding high in that 28 car. Brunton getting a good piece of that wall over off of turn two. Squalling a ball in the tires down here in turn number one.
Halfway side coming out to you later. Scott Tesnier in the double O car. Dennis Sanders riding in second. A good battle back there for third. Quick in a 22 car. Got one in the wall. Dodge him down here in turn four. Dennis Sanders trying to get back up in the 28 car. Tesnair out front. Sanders riding in second. Eddie Quick in the 22 car. But a pure stock main event portion of the Blue Gray 100. Tesnair, still your leader. 45 car now moving up in the second. That'll be Chad Tesnair in the 45 car. Sanders got a problem with a 28 car down here to turn. He gets tagged. Double O car. Little flame out of the side of the Ford for Scott Tesnier. Chad Tesnier doing battle with him. He'll take him out of here almost in a turn. Chad Tesnier, your new leader here on the white flag lap. Chad Tesnier in the 45. Scott in the double O car as they come off a turn forward to the final checkered flag of 19 and 94. Chad Tesnier going to get the win. Chad Tesnier getting the win.